Hello my dear doctors, welcome at Dr. Rami Cardio Club. Today I would like to discuss with you a very interesting case. Here we go. We have 40 years old gentleman came to the ER complaining of dizziness, diaphoresis and palpitation. His blood pressure is 100 over 60, heart rate is around 160 beats per minute. His ECG is shown below. How interesting. What is your next step to treat him? Look at this ECG. Look at this. What do you see? Yeah, just keep it in your mind. How about the answers given? Your next step is intravenous amiodarone, cardioversion, intravenous lapitalol, intravenous propafenone, intravenous verapamil, intravenous digoxin, intravenous adenosine. Oh my god. Um, I would like to see the ECG again. Okay. It's now clear. We have wide complex tachycardia. This is how I usually describe what I see in the ECG, I see tachycardia. It is wide complex tachycardia and it is irregular. Okay, so what is your next step? Yes, it is. The correct answer here is not cardio version okay so what is the next step what is the answer the answer is intravenous propafenone intravenous propafenone this is what i'm going to talk about in this session intravenous propafenone our patient has pre-excited atrial fibrillation wolf parkinson white syndrome as you see here how this ecg was developed it has been developed because the patient has an accessory pathway connection between the atrium and ventricle it is green in color in this diagram this is a fast accessory pathway so a premature piece develops in the atria will cross the accessory pathway not the AV node, which is the physiologic pathway, and then it goes again to the to it will pass from the atria to the ventricle through the accessory pathway, and then go again to the atria through the AV node, and then it will pass again through the accessory pathway. Then a vicious circle will happen, and the arrhythmia will be developed. Okay, this is how. Arrhythmia like this is developed. So it is atrial fibrillation developed by presence of an accessory pathway. So we call it pre excited AF, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. So why cardioversion is not the correct answer? Let's discuss the answers given to us. Intravenous amiodarone. Amiodarone for a long time was described as the drug of a choice but in the recent guidelines because amiodarone has been recognized that it has a beta blocking effect it will not reasonable here because we will skip giving a beta blocker or any kind of av node blocker in this situation because if you give a, an av node blocker here you will encourage peats to be going through the accessory pathway which is very fast conducting pathway so i will have a more aggressive arrhythmia and increase in the heart rate so beta blocking effect is better 
to be avoided here. So intravenous amiodarone will not be the answer here. Cardioversion will be the answer of a choice if the patient is vitally unstable. Our patient has a blood pressure 100 over 60. It is a little low, but he is still vitally stable. So cardioversion is reserved for patients who are vitally unstable. Intravenous lapitalol. Lapitalol is a beta blocker. It is not the answer, definitely. Propafenone. Propafenone is a class 1C antiarrhythmic drug which is working on inhibiting the conduction through the accessory pathway, so it will be the drug of its choice. Also, intravenous verapamel. Verapamel is a calcium channel blocker and encourage the AV node blocking and the delay of conduction, so it is resembling lapitalol. It is not the answer. Dijoxin is not the answer here because it is carrying an AV node blocking effect, encouraging a vagal stimulation to the AV node, slowing the conduction through the AV node. It is not it will not be the answer. Intravenous adenosine, it is an AV node blocker, very fast, uh, which is reserved for supraventricular tachycardias, not this kind of arrhythmia. So the question now is, let's talk shortly about antiarrhythmic drugs, and then to the drug of choice here, which is propofenone. What we know and what we don't know. To summarize antiarrhythmic medications in a very simple way, it is classified as class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, and miscellaneous group. Class 1, they are sodium channel blockers. It includes the class 1A, kinidine. This is very old. Class 1P, lidocaine. And class 1C, which is the most recent one which is used for many of arrhythmias, supraventricular and ventricular sometimes, includes flecainide and propafenone. Propafenone was a drug of choice here. Class two antiarrhythmic drugs are beta blockers, pisoprolol, mitoprolol, uh, lapitalol, and so on. Class three is potassium channel blockers, amiodarone, dronidarone, sutalol, dofetilid, and ipotilid. The class three, the class three has a very famous side effect, which is the prolonged QT interval in the ECG causing more liability for developing ventricular tachycardia. So you have to watch them carefully. The difference between amiodarone and the dronidarone Amiodarone has 30% iodine, 30% of its weight is iodine, but dronidarone is not. So amiodarone will be affecting your thyroid gland, but dronidarone is not. Class 4 antiarrhythmic drugs, calcium channel blocker, the, the group that is non-dihydropyridine groups, which are working on the myocardium, inhibiting the myocardial contractility and inhibiting conduction through the AV node, slowing the heart rate. They are verapamil and deltiazem, miscellaneous group, adenosine, which is very fast, very fast AV node blocker used for uh, supraventricular tachycardia, dijoxin is Another member, magnesium sulfate. Dijoxin is used mainly for atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, but not this one, not the pre-excited one. Okay? Magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is um, a drug used to slow the conduction through the AV node. Used also in medicine as a bronchodilator in bronchial asthma patients and it is also used in the preeclampsia and eclampsia as a vasodilator lowering down the blood pressure of a pregnant lady 
right? How about propafenone? Propafenone is class 1c antiarrhythmic drug. It is used for most supraventricular tachycardias, includes atrial fibrillation and flutter. Actually, we use it at the pill in the pocket fashion, which means that uh, we educate our patients that when they have an attack of atrial fibrillation, if it is parosesmal one, when you have it and you feel it and you feel it is a regular piece, you can take the propafenone and repeat it over the day for a couple of days until the, the heart rhythm is going back to sinus rhythm and regular one. Okay. Constipation is the most common side effect of propafenone. Actually, Vrapamil and Diltiazem also, calcium channel blockers, are carrying the same side effect. Other side effects include bradycardia. They slow down the heart rate, not powerfully, but they actually does. Arrhythmias. Any antiarrhythmic drug, be sure that it will cause another arrhythmia. Chest pains and dizziness are very common. Propafenone needs a structural and functional normal heart. You cannot give it to any patient with a structural or functional abnormality uh, because so easily you can have an aggressive kind of arrhythmia. You may use propafenone to treat supraventricular tachycardia, but actually if you give it to structurally or functionally abnormal heart, it may cause ventricular tachycardia, which is very aggressive and you may lose your patient. Another very interesting thing about propafenone is that it follows slow kinetics. What does it mean? It is a pharmacological term describes that the drug will be causing its effect, its maximum effect, its maximum work. You're going to get the maximum of the drug if the heart rate is slow. So actually, I noticed in my practice that when I combine this kind of medication, class 1C antiarrhythmic drug with a beta blocker, it causes a more control of the heart rhythm. They are used mainly to get your rhythm back to sinus rhythm, back to regular one. So it's, it gives its maximum effect as an antiarrhythmic going back to the sinus rhythm if your heart rate is slow. If they are not able to slow it down because it's very fast, you can combine with them a beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, so you get a better response to the treatment with propafenone or flecainide. My beloved doctors, I wish you found this session um, interesting to you. I wish you the best of luck. I see you again and again in more videos. Bye-bye.